change and release management. We're going to look at how we can manage changes using various risk and prioritization features, how easy it is to understand the potential impact of changes, not only from an infrastructure perspective, but also from a timing and scheduling perspective. We'll also look at how we can help coordinate the change processes and make sure that everything gets done and signed off on. Here as a change manager, I can see my home page showing me straight away what's open, and I can sort on the priority of these. All these columns are configurable, so you can see as much or as little information as you want. The dates, scheduling info, when it's due, everything like that here on the screen. For any new agents who may not be familiar with our risk matrix, providing that here on the home page for them, even with some examples, can provide that extra guidance for them. Same with the high-level metrics here with the drill down. Of course, they can configure additional home pages and menus as well. So for example, here we have the forward schedule of change. As we hover over areas, we can see it highlight information, and the color coding can show us at a glance that it is within a change freeze period. Over here, more dashboards showing us what is in conflict or releases we may have scheduled. We can drill down to see more information in our monitors. Let's take a look at how these changes get into the system. In addition to recurring changes, we can log them directly as an agent. Here's my standard change logging form. Similar to incident and problem, I have key data that I need to record. Now for those changes that happen frequently, I can use templates to save time. We're all about saving time, so you'll see lots of these features throughout the system. Like this, for example, easily populating the details of the guidance into the description for you. So maybe if those were key details or questions, it's all right here at your fingertips. All the descriptions are rich text, so being able to add in diagrams and pictures be very helpful. Categories are going to help drive assignment as well as impact and urgency rules, just like we saw in the incident and problem video. We can see some dates entered, so that's what's driving the calendar, and then some risk assessment questions that we can fill out. You can ask whatever you want, and based on the answers, you can ask additional questions or provide additional guidance. For example, here, based on my probability of failure, I can make sure that they have a required executive sponsor. We've got other fields here, so test and implementation plans, communication plans. You can have as many of these as you want, adding them through our form designer. You can have as many of these as you want, adding them through our designer. You can also lock down the fields, allowing users to only fill them out at a certain point in the process, such as only after the change has been implemented. That's perfect for those post-implementation reviews. Now in order to see what else is being impacted, we have our Impact Explorer, which graphically displays discovered and logical relationships of your CMDB. You can see it's hosted on these four servers. We can traverse up and downstream through the relationships and leverage color coding and drill down for even more detail on status and configuration. We can also see the people impacted, any of those little heads there which will allow us to see who is impacted along with the types and reasons which allows us to make sure we do targeted notifications. So that communication plan we saw earlier can get to the people who need to be notified. You can also drill down directly into other open tickets. So other incidents, problems, tasks, in this case, getting into event management to monitoring alerts. These can all drive the color coding here, marking things in red for down. The next piece I wanna show you is the process designer. That's how we're coordinating all the tasks, whether they're parallel or sequential, loopback, multi-level decisions, all of this is going to drive the process for the change. These stages and tasks can also be automated as well, so tying into the ITOM side of the deployment release. Here, right before we close it out, you can see we have that review stage, making sure we do our due diligence. Now if I go to the Gantt chart view of this process, you can see how we're able to distinguish the actual outage or implementation stage here from all the other work. This is key because that's really the only part we care about in regards to not being in the maintenance window or happening during a freeze period. Seeing that this is highlighted in red means I'm in some kind of conflict. I can see what exactly that is and even override the conflict if I have the right permissions. My other option would be to adjust the timings so that it removes the conflict. In this case, I'll be nice and let these guys have more time to plan. So now the change is no longer red, 
as the work is being done outside the freeze period highlighted in pink. The process can help govern all kinds of different work and even help you automate repetitious tasks such as installs. This automation comes in very handy when you're disposing of assets, especially if you're looking at any of those ISO 27001 security requirements. You'll want to ensure you're wiping the systems before disposing or returning them. This means I can allow users to request pre-approved software through our service catalog, and this workflow can trigger the install on the target system all in the background for me. If something happens to interrupt it, or it can't complete successfully, it'll insert this triage stage here for manual intervention. You can have different change workflows and get as granular as you'd like, and also leverage our dynamic tasking ability so you really can model any type of workflow well beyond the typical standard and emergency type changes. Looking back at the change, remember we have our powerful info zone that is pushing relevant information to me. In this case, I see a related service release. Let's add this new change to this release build by linking them together. Now this release can manage the overall governance of the project, with each linked change carrying out its own tasks and workflow. Since we're never operating in a simple environment, let's take a look at that Gantt calendar view we saw earlier with multiple changes. In this case, I have three different RFCs that are shown. As we saw before, the pink is a change freeze period. Now the green blocks are reoccurring maintenance windows. To help make sure people leverage these, we offer an easy way for them to move them to the next open window. Now as all of this work is being done, we can see monitors full of the tasks along with the workflow stages they are in. Remember, these columns are configurable, filterable, and sortable, so we can quickly get to the data we care about. Looking at each piece of work will also show the parent change information alongside the task view, providing context for everyone involved. So we looked at how we have the ability to prioritize and categorize RFCs, how we can leverage infrastructure data to understand impact, we looked at a variety of different change calendars, including the task board, showing how we can coordinate all the work while avoiding those conflicts and freeze periods. We quickly looked at coordinating the changes into a release and discussed how we can automate and standardize workflows through integrations, providing a higher level of successful implementations and reducing manual effort.